guys, we are back. After a little bit of a delay, we are back at it with another video talking about Wild Survivors. What do you do with Wild Survivors? That's what we're going to be talking about today, but particularly the Collector Rares. Because for most sets, you're trying to figure out what cards you want to buy, what cards you're going to ignore. But in these deck building sets... There's really just three decks in here. And so the question is, do you want to build one of those three decks? And if you don't, then chances are you're not looking at buying anything except that there are collector rares in here. What do you do with the collector rares? Do you buy them? Do you ignore them? And if you are going to buy them, when do you buy them? That's what we're going to be talking about today. My name is Todd from Go To Cards. It's what we try and do on this channel, help Yu-Gi-Oh! players buy cards smarter. And that's what this video is designed to do. If you like what we're doing, hit that subscribe button. We are right under 200. Get us up there. We're going to do a nice giveaway for 200. And then we're going to push on right to that 300 mark. So hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, helps us out a lot. All right, let's look at it. We're talking about Wild Survivors. Um, we're talking about a set that's coming out this week, and it's got 15 different collector rares in there. Some of them are Vanquished Soul collector rares. Some of them are going to be Dinosaur collector rares. Some of them are going to be of the new novella kind of ritual archetype collector rares. Some of them are just going to be general collector rares. Now, we don't know all the collector rares that are in this set, but I am told that we do know that TC Boo will be a collector's rare, which I love. Uh, we do know um, uh, several of the Vanquished Soul are getting the collector rare treatment, it looks like some cards that we really want it to be collector rares are not going to be, you know, like for example, for me, and I know I'm, I'm alone or in the vast majority or minority on this, but I really wanted the true king to be a collector rare. I did. I just, I love that card. I wanted it to be a collector rare. It's most likely not. Another one for me is um, Enemy Controller. I really want Enemy Controller Collector Rare. Doesn't look like that's going to be the case. But let me let me talk to you about Collector Rares briefly. Because this is a Collector Rare set. And I am a Collector Rare man. I love Collector Rares. I go in on the Collector Rares. But there's a way to do it and a way to not do it. And I can only share with you what we do. And, and I'm going to share that with you. I'm going to share our approach to collector rares. And, you know, maybe it's helpful, maybe it's not helpful. But this is how we do it. You all know that we open up a lot of, of cards. We open up a lot of cases. Uh, many, 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 many cases. Um, and so we get all these collector rares. What do we do with them? Do we, do we keep them? Do we sell them? What do we do with the collector rares that we get? Well, what we do with the collector rares, I'm going to give you an example of this. I'm going to give you this, this example. This is the Black Luster Soldier, the Legendary Swordsman. It's a really cool card. This is the collector's rare of this card. Now, what I do with collector rares is if it's a staple like TC Boo, I, I make sure I get my three. If it's an extra deck um, or a ritual, I make sure that I get my one and then I just kind of move on from there. But when do we do it? Well, I went back and I looked at our eBay sales on um, this came out of Maze of Memories. And in Maze of Memories, we were fortunate enough to, to pull two of these. We only pulled two of, um, of this card in Collector's Rare. So, but I look back and we sold them immediately. 
which is generally what we do. When we open up and we get collector rares, even if we're going to keep the collector's rare, we still sell it immediately. Um, even if it's a collector rare that we know that we want, we still sell that card immediately. Why? Well, it's never going to be higher. <laughs> it's, it's, there's a good chance like 75 to 80% of these collector rares are never going to be higher than that when they are when they first come out. And this is a really good example of this. Right now, this card is sitting around $50. I paid for this card. I bought this card off of another seller for $50. Why did I buy it if I pulled two of them? Well, I bought it because I bought it much later. And the two that I pulled, I sold for $90. And then the other one I sold for $100. So I sold my two and then I bought mine at half the price. And that's how you buy collector rares. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, that is how you do it. You can build a massive, amazing collection that people are stunned by. If you sell the cards when you pull them right away, when they're at their height, and then you go in and you buy them at half price. That is how you buy collector rares. Most of these collector rares are going to fall out. And people will tell you that they're not going to fall out and don't listen to them. They are lying to you or they do not know. They don't open up enough product to actually know. I'll give you a couple examples of this. When Amazing Defenders came out, and that's where you got the one for one. Every Tons of, I'm not going to say everybody, but a lot of people at, the, at my locals and other people that I talked to online were telling me that that card was going to stay at $100. And I told them there's no possible way that that card was going to stay at $100. It told me I was stupid. Um, maybe I am. But in this case, I was right. That card did not stay at $100. It's now somewhere around $50. Another example of that is Droll and Lockbird. When Droll and Lockbird came out, I did the same thing. I had all intentions on getting a playset of Droll and Lockbird. Um, and, but when I got mine, I sold them. I sold them for $120, something like that. When, when they first were, you know, when the set first got released, that's kind of what they were. And everybody told me, you know, you're crazy because the card's not going to go below $100. Well, they're wrong. The card went all the way down to somewhere around $55. Now, it did shoot back up. But I was able to buy two of the three playset for, um, you know, trying to get a playset of Droll and Lockbird. Um, I still only have two because I'm not going to pay the hundred dollars. I'm going to wait till it comes back down. And I think now it's even coming back down somewhere around $70. There's a right time to buy and a wrong time to buy. There's a right time to sell and a wrong time to sell. When a set first gets released, that is 75 to 80, 85% of the time, that is the time to sell the card. After the set's been out for two weeks, three weeks, a month, then you go back in and you start looking at those cards. You start seeing if they're falling down. It's the same pattern that takes place with every set. It's nothing new. Same pattern. Same thing that I, that I showed you with this card right here. You can go back and you can do it with 85% of the collector rares. You can do it. What you'll see is it will start out up here. It will dip down and then they will generally go back up. You want to buy them on the dip. You want to wait two, three, four, five weeks. Now I know that it's not, you know, everybody wants the card when it's first released. 
Well, that's why it's super expensive. But if you're willing to wait, you can get a great deal. The Gizmaker Orochis. I picked up my Gizmaker Orochi collector rare playset of them for $25 each. They, they were 50, 60, and I didn't buy them then. I waited. Then they went down to 25. I, I went in, I bought my playset. Then they went up. I think they're somewhere around $40. They might come back down a, a, lo a little bit, but you're going to see them going down and up and then down a little bit, and then up there, they're always going to keep on going up. You buy them when they're cheap. This is how you approach Wild Survivor's collector rares, is that you wait, and you buy them when they're cheaper. People are going to tell you TC Boo is not going to fall out. It will. It will. It will fall out. There's a lot of people opening up this set. It will fall out. I'm not saying that every card is going to go down to $25 or $40 or even $50, but it will fall. It will. There will be a dip, and you've got to be able to gauge that dip and swoop in and buy it at the low end. You can do this. This is not that hard. You see it happen in every single set. Approach Wild Survivor smartly. If you're a dinosaur player, wait. Those dinosaur uh, collector rares will fall out. I guarantee it. Same thing with, um, with the novellas. Same thing with um, the general cards. The one set of cards I don't know is the um, Vanquished Soul. And the reason that I can't say for sure is because if the deck takes off, those collector rares will take off as well. You just got to look at Pearly to see that. Um, but if the deck struggles, then those collector rares are going to fall out as well. You want an example of that? Look at Exosister. All the hype of Exosister, those collector rares were high. But when Exosister failed to live up to the hype, they fell out. Um, so, it, you know, Vanquish Soul is a little bit of a, you know, not quite sure what to do. But the rest of them, you wait. Watch them fall out and then swoop in. My name is Todd from Code2 Cards. I'm going to be back tomorrow with another video. Five cards you should be buying right now post ban list. So that's what we're going to be looking at. We'll also reveal the winner from our last giveaway. Uh, but once again, my name is Todd from Code2 Cards and I'm out of here. <music>